Hickman hitting. Batting 394 on the season. Well, Alcorn State has really struggled this season. A team that has won just two games all season long. Just two and 26 on the year. And they fouled it back. They have Pico Khan working ahead quickly. Yeah, this Alcorn State team has had the struggle this year. They made their way up from Lorman earlier today. The pitching has had its difficulties. They won a game earlier this year in Pine Bluff against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Here's a one-two. Fouled it back. Paladino working well. Yeah, Paladino fouling off pitches, spoiling pitches. Khan just can't seem to find a way to get one past him. Head in the count. You throw one outside of the zone. You got a hitter in swing mode. That well, was outside the zone, but still swinging and making contact. Yeah, went up the ladder again with a fastball. Tried to blow it by him, and Paladino working it well. Martin and Banks to follow here in the top of the first inning. We'll set the Bulldog defense for you in just a minute. We'll try to go outside that time, Charlie. See the first base umpire, David Bailey, today. Anthony Jordan behind the plate. David Bailey over at first. Timothy Cooper down at second. And Will Posey over at third today, the umpiring crew. 2-2 pitch, granted right back to Kong. And Pico, the underhand toss in time for the out, and that's the way this one starts. So a ground ball back to Khan. The pitcher makes the nice play, reaching off the mound, fielding his position well. well that was a good battle at the plate that time, both. Both players doing what you want to see them do. Paladino swinging at pitches, staying alive, and Pico Khan staying in the strike zone. And Saw him reach back, bring a little more on the fastball right there at 94. Yeah, Ben Martin, a big swing. Sophomore from cutoff, Louisiana. And fouled a back off of Joe Powell. It's Powell doing the catching today for Mississippi State. We've got a first start from Ethan Pulliam out at second base, a start well freshman. And that ball is strike three called on the outside corner. Boy, I hope Anthony Jordan does not give that kind of delay all day today. Two outs here at the top of the first. 95, 94, 93. That one paints the corner. And two up, two down, and here's Callum Banks. Off the end of the bat, pass Con. Here comes Pulliam on the run, and he'll make the play, and the start will fresh. Uh, here's Amani Larry to lead things off. Amani batting 250 on the season. Well, it's been a nice day here in Starkville. The temperatures have been a little bit warmer here today. And they are for a strike and a count one and one. 81 degrees right now. Feels like 83. Wind is blowing out to left field, so it's blowing out of the south. About 10 miles an hour. Should stay around 10 miles an hour throughout the game. 2 1. What do you got on our temperature late in the ball game? Going to see it get a little cooler here? Yeah, they get down in the low 70s. Depends on what time we finish, Charlie. If it's 8 o'clock, it'll be 75. Pitch missed outside. A leadoff walk here in the bottom of the first inning. The low later tonight will be 67, so it'll be a 
warm evening overnight tonight. Well, you see the leadoff walk to Amani Larry. David Mershon now will hit. Mershon comes to the plate, hitting 328 on the season. Ball skips away from the catcher. And down to second base, Amani Larry will go. Kroll doing the catching in the game tonight. Dylan Kroll, the catcher for Alcorn State. Well, State playing tonight and then have Super Bulldog weekend Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Auburn coming in here. Butch Thompson, former State assistant. Been at Auburn a while now. Tigers kind of scuffling here early in SEC play. 2-0. and In there for a strike and a count 2-1. and one. Yeah, Auburn just 2-13 and 13 in league play. That overall it's an important weekend for Mississippi State, but especially so in light of the favorable matchup. And Larry's just going to run over to third base. Nobody holding him, and he took over – uh, took off in a hurry, got over to third base without the throw. Three and one, the count to Mershon, a leadoff walk to Amani Larry, and now three and one to Mershon. Batting 328 on the season, and that pitch is just outside, and ball four, and back to back walks to start this one in the bottom of the first inning. And that's kind of been the story for Alcorn State this year, just the inability to throw strikes. And 218 innings of work. They have given up 349 runs. Runner goes from first. The throw is down, and it is close, and he's not in time. Almost hit. Almost hit the pitcher, Lorenz, the back of the head. Let's take another look. It was a good throw by Kroll, the catcher, though. It was skipped on down there. Pitch was a ball. Dakota Jordan at the plate. Now they count 2-0. and oh. Sophomore from Canton, Mississippi. And he rips that one off the glove of the third baseman and into left field. Larry and Mershon will score. It'll be a two-run single for Dakota Jordan, and Mississippi State has an early 2-0 lead. That ball was scalded. Yeah, hit hard by Dakota Jordan. It's into left field and plates a couple of runs. Yeah, Gamez tried to go up, just couldn't get the glove up plenty of time. And the liner off the glove of the third baseman gets a couple runs home. Two walks, two steals, a wild pitch, and it's a 2 nothing lead. Here's Hunter Hines. Hunter batting 291 on the season, nine home runs. It is ninth home run in the game on Saturday night. It gave State the lead late. And extra innings over Ole Miss. Bulldogs lost the lead a few times there. Throw down to second, not in time. Dakota Jordan able to steal the base. That's his third stolen base of the year. He was only two for two before that steal. And a 2 nothing lead and a yeah. runner at second, nobody out. We're going to need a seamstress. Slid and tore a hole in his pants. Takes off for third, ground ball to first, knocked down by the first baseman, picked up, and he'll race to the bag. Nice job by Banks. Able to knock it down, didn't field it cleanly. Dakota Jordan was off and running. Gets over to third easily. Now a runner at third and one out as Hunter Hines is retired for the first out of the bottom of the first. Connor Isaac will bat. Infield comes midway in the middle of the infield. Even with a bag on the corners. Isaac 
hitting 323. Senior from Goffstown, New Hampshire, started his career at VCU. The 1-0. Charlie, one out and a runner at third. This is where the dogs really struggled in the game on Saturday, and it came back to bite them. Boy, howdy. Four different times in that ball game had runners at third, less than two out, failed to get them home. A lot of strikeouts in play. That time, get a ground ball, gets the run home, and does the job. Off the end of the bat, out to the second baseman. Play made by Martin, the second baseman. Coming in to score is Dakota Jordan, and it's a 3-0 Bulldog lead here in the bottom of the first. Nobody on it, two outs, and Bryce Chance steps in. And to the left side, going to be a tough play. In the hole, throw across, not in time. And Paladino with no chance. It'll be an infield single for Bryce Chance and the second Bulldog hit of this first inning. So you had a couple of walks, now a couple of hits in the inning. And it stays alive for Logan Kohler. Kohler, a guy the Bulldogs would like to see heat up the plate. Batting average down to 204 as we enter the ball game today. Runner goes and the throw is down. Is a good throw and he's out. So Chance trying to steal the base. Thrown out for the third time this year. What a good throw by Kroll. The scouting report clearly telling the Bulldogs to run, but I'm not sure that's been the right call. And this is Kroll to lead off. Dylan Kroll, the catcher, threw out the runner to end the inning. And leading off here in the top of the second, Kroll, the sophomore from Hattiesburg. Batting 333, 20 hits and 60 at bats. Has a couple doubles, couple triples. So 16 out of the 20 hits are singles, and he'll swing and miss for strike three. And the second strikeout for Pico Khan. And a leadoff man retired at the top of the second. Just challenged him with a fastball. Kroll unable to keep uh, catch up there. Gamez will now bat. First pitch is in there for a strike. Only left-handed hitter in the lineup for Alcorn State. Starting at third base, and he went around in the count 0-2. This is the only midweek game for the Bulldogs here in the midweek. Getting ready for Super Bulldog weekend. Six o'clock game on Friday against the Auburn Tigers, then a five o'clock start on Saturday. Can't remember the last five o'clock start. Mershon slides, gets up, flips over, and time for the out for the second out of the second inning. A nice job by David Mershon going up the middle. Had time to make the play. This ball was hit hard, came off the bat well, but Mershon goes up the middle. That ball 101 off the bat, and you see Mershon having to go to the ground, ride himself, and flip it across. And two quick outs in a second. Here's Gavin Caston. First pitch swinging fouls. That one off down the left field line. Caston played down at Terry High School, just south of Jackson. The 0 1. He fouled it back. Swing and a miss, and that will end the inning. A couple of strikeouts for they don't realize how good they got it. And Kohler leading off. He was at the plate when Bryce Chance was thrown out. Come hang out with us, kids. We'll kill your spirits. <laughs> yeah, talk to one of the coaches today, Keys Kennard. Keys had them all out in the outfield tonight. Go 
Well, it takes a special type of person to coach the youngsters at that age. You got some great coaches. And? And you got some that uh, <laughs> you kind of wonder what goes on in their mind. Put a hat and some cargo shorts in a, in a coach pitch field, and they're seven years old. Some people go crazy. It's the heat, man. <laughs> I don't think it's the heat. Mississippi heat will get you. So bottom of the second, three to nothing ball game. We're going to the big league chew now. Big league chew. Now it's getting serious. Now you got to put one more pinch in that right jaw. The whole thing about the big league chew is you can't have your mouth be able to close at all. Hey, used to you get the bubble gum with the baseball cards. It used to be a big deal. Hey, Kohler strikes out looking to start the second. Well, this is a nice pitch, and it is right on the edge of the strike zone. So works the outside part of the plate, gets it to spin back, and catches the zone. That's a call third strike. And so one out, Joe Powell will be at the plate. Powell batting 294. 10 hits and 34 at bats, making his 12th start of the season. That's, oh, a, that's a nice pitch right there. Starts him off with a slider down and away. And, Charlie, if you saw this past weekend against Ole Miss, especially in the Saturday and Sunday games, Ole Miss started out state hitters, a lot of breaking balls early in count. That ball sky to the right side, second baseman out. Martin is under it. He's there to make the catch and two outs in the inning. It's almost like it was fastballs early and then – or breaking balls early, fastballs late in the count. And two quick outs, and Ethan Pulliam drawing his first start. He's got a couple of at-bats. He scored a run this year, has an RBI. And there for a strike, the freshman from here in Starton. An outstanding punter in high school football. He chops that one left side and fielded by Gamez. He'll toss it across and a quick one, two, three inning for Lorenz, the right hander. Bulldogs go in order. Down today. I don't think I can remember seeing Pico Khan pitch like he has today. Yeah, Pico located well, throwing fastball 94. Jalen Lucky, the batter. Three strikeouts here early for Pico Khan. But just from a stuff perspective, I don't think he's been better as I say that. Nearly hits the bull. All right, so put one up, break one here. Yeah, swing and a miss. Right. Well, just ran it away at 84. And another strikeout for Pico Khan. Starts it out, worked it out a little bit further. And Lucky just ran out of bat. Four strikeouts for Khan now. And this is Diego Lopez. Diego Lopez Molina batting 171 on the season. Six hits and 35 at bats. He struck out 12 times. He's walked four. And he gone. Two outs and back-to-back -back strikeouts for Pico Khan. Well, you gave the call before we got the signal. Yeah, I was beginning to wonder. One, two, two 
three. There it is. There. Come on, Anthony. Help us out up here. That first pitch swinging, Jalen Burrell. Nine hole hitter. Anthony Jordan behind the plate. Swing and strike two. Pico's retired eight in a row to start this one. And grounded just inside the bag at third. It'll kick off the wall out in left field. And Burrell on his way to second, sliding in head first. A two out double for Jalen Burrell. Hey, Burrell gets us in just inside the bag at third base. Ball hit hard. Took the funny kick off the wall. No chance to hold him to single. Good foul back. And out to the second baseman, Ethan Pulliam. He'll step and throw in time for the out, and that will end the inning. Alcorn State gets its first base runner of the night. In his second start of the season. A 6'3 junior from Hamilton, Ohio. Uh, just below the knees. It counts one and one. Well, Monty walked in that opening at bat, then scored on the two-run single by Dakota Jordan. the end of the bat off the first base side. Count two and two. They missed outside. Now the count goes full. Well, Charlie, you like I, we're kind of favor Warren Nolan when it comes to RPIs. Am I correct in saying that? Or that you is it? correct. I don't know if you changed your mind. I'm nothing if not loyal. Swing and a miss. And a strikeout for Lawrence. That's his second of the day. He strikes out Amani Larry to start the bottom of the third. And here's David Bershon. That was a really good pitch right on the edge of being a strike. Certainly one you have to be swinging at, but in a really tough place to hit. Bulldogs start the night at 49 in the RPI. Start talking about quad one, two, three, and four. Five wins in quad one, two and oh in quad two. You got seven losses in quad three and four. You got five and three, quad three, ten and four in quad four. Man, they changed up the, the way they do the RPI this year with the baseball committee. You know, quad one win is if. 1 to 25 if it's a home game. Neutral site, 1 to 40. If you play 
on the road between 1 and 60 in any win. That qualifies as a quad one win. So it gives more, a lot more weight if you can go on the road and win. It does not give as much weight if you win a game at home, especially against a decent RPI team. Now, tonight is not a night, and this is not a knock at the brethren. that you are competing with in this game. But Alcorn State, the RPI has not been very kind this year to Alcorn State. Out of 305 ranked teams, Alcorn State has an RPI of 302 coming into the night. So 49 is the RPI right now for State. Runner going and a pitch foul back. Rashawn after drawing the walk. They had a win against Mississippi Valley State on March the 20th and then a winning on the 28th against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Since then they have lost 10 in a row. I'm gonna revisit the RPIs of some of the Bulldog opponents earlier this season. The one that surprises me Lined in the center field and slipping down. Can't get to his feet. Ball goes all the way to the wall. Burrell going to go chase it down. Runner going to try to score from first. A throw into third and not in time. And Dakota Jordan slides in safely as Mershon scores to make it 4-0. Well, Burrell out of center field. Slipped down and then couldn't get up. Let's take a look. This ball is hit hard right at Morrell, and that ball carried a little further than he expected. That's 112 off the bat. That ball's hit hard, and sometimes those as an outfielder are the hardest ones to judge, the ones hit right at you. Yeah, line drive right at you, and it'll go in the book as a triple for Dakota Jordan to give him credit with his third RBI tonight. State has a 4-0 lead, and here's Hunter Hines. He grounded out to the first baseman his first time up. Charlie, you were talking about RPIs of former opponents. Yeah, Austin P at 194. That's a surprise. I would have guessed that Austin P would record a 21 and 14. Well, Mount St. Mary's not helping state. No, they aren't. What, 297? Yeah, 297 RPI. They're 6 and 26. The Mount. Yeah, Georgia Southern's doing a pretty good job. They're RPI 61. Air Force, not too terrible. They're 106. Air Force, 15 and 19. Ball gets past the catcher. And back to the screen. Crowell could knock it down, and Dakota Jordan comes in to score. It'll be a walk to Hunter Hines. Oh, oh no. Gonna send, uh, gonna say it's a hit batsman. Well, I'm going to say a hit batsman. Dakota Jordan will go back to third. Hunter Hines will go down to first. Huh. Well, if it hit him, <laughs> it caught the, uh, the back foot on the top. Hunter going to take first. Isaac going to bat one out, two on. Runners at the corners. You know, Evansville is not too terrible. 129, they're 18 and 17, the Aces. How is Georgia 11? It doesn't really compute. No, it doesn't. Of course, A&M, a big win on the road at A&M. That's a quad one win for State. A&M 32 and 4, an RPI of 2. Clemson has the top RPI in the country. Two and one to Isaac. And able to check the swing, and now the count three and one.
course, you got that loss to Central Arkansas. Moved everything up to 11 o'clock. Had to play that game that day. Central Arkansas's RPI is 212. That's a quad four loss. Runner going, and there's a pop up. High foul territory. Gamez ranging over and going to run out of real estate. Well, you take it. I promise you, you can have it. State at 49. Hey, Ole Miss, RPI of 29 right now. Runner going, the pitch is down and away, and that's ball four. The bases are going to be loaded with one out. And that will get us a walk to the mound. Give you a little memory from here, 1985. Mississippi State wins the SEC. You've got an off weekend before the regionals back then. Played a three-game series here with Georgia Tech just as a, almost like a pickup game. What do you call it, soccer or friendly? Yep. Played, both teams played exhibition games here. Of course, in that 97 regional, you know, we talk about State and Washington, Georgia Tech was the one seed, the overall number one seed in the country that year, playing on the road here in Startwood. Is that Keith Dillgard? Oh, yes, the big pitching. Keith Dillgard just shut down Georgia Tech. And there for a strike and a count three and one to Bryce Chance. Bases loaded, State with a four nothing lead. Hey, popped him up. Into shallow right field, ranging in, they'll make the catch. Jordan gonna try to tag and here comes the throw, it'll be cut off and now, huh. Hunter Hines, bull rushing. And he's out at second base, and that'll end the inning. Starting to settle in. And you know, one thing about Ligon, he was hurt coming into this season. And so a guy that is this season plays out could be more and more of a factor as he works his way back into form. Yeah, big swing. Martin at the plate. Struck out looking his first time out. The one one. Strike two. Nice pitch. And now the count full. Three balls, two strikes. It'll be two, three, four in the order for Alcorn State here at the top of the fourth. Martin, Banks, then Kroll. And a lead off one. McKenzie has taken over at first base for State. Hunter Hines has come out of the game. Jackson McKenzie now the new freshman first baseman, Pace, Florida. Lead off walk, here's Banks. He granted out to the second baseman his first time up. There's a big swing.
They only have one Wednesday game, one game tomorrow in the SEC, and that's Texas Tech. They're playing two games in Fayetteville against Arkansas. It's all the other games tonight. There's a strike on the outside corner, and a count now three and two. So after the leadoff walk, Ligon goes 3-1 to Banks. Let's see how it plays out. He got ahead. One and two on Martin. And that's strike three caught at the knees. A skip throw back to first. And, hey, Charlie, we talk about it all night, about how slow the home plate umpire Anthony Jordan has been on calling that third strike. I think the runner at first thought that was a walk. The batter knew it, but the delay, and you I throw the runner at first. I think he got hung out thinking there was a walk there. And that's a, it's not just a, we talk about that. It's not something that just annoys fans or broadcasters. It's a mechanical issue in terms of calling the game that we see right there how it has an impact. And that definitely would draw the ire for either coach, especially when you got a runner at first. And if you're ringing a guy up at the plate, you take all kind of time before you make the call. Let's see, watch this. Yeah, he's jogging. He thinks it's a walk. And you think about in a close game if that happens. Well, it's 5 nothing. Here's a line drive to center field, and Isaac ranging in will make the catch. But boy, in the second. Yeah, I got a backdoor breaking ball. Struck out looking his first time up. Far as taking a look at the series history between these two teams, 17 games. Bulldogs have not dropped a game to Auburn. The closest game played between these two teams was a 7-6 ball game in 2013. That 2013 team had a few big names on it. A swing and a count two and two. Fag State trailed that game five to nothing after two innings. Who started? Who pitched that game? State opened it with Brandon Woodruff, huh. who went two thirds of an inning. One of the best pitchers on the planet, by the way, went two thirds of an inning. Gave up four runs; three of them were earned. Walked a couple. Faced just eight hitters through 26 pitches before being. Chase giving way to Luis Poliarena, and then Miles Gentry got the win. Holder had to come in and save it. Yeah, down and in, that's ball four. The leadoff walk to Logan Kohler. So you called me a while ago. We were talking about. You know, Start talking about degrees of separation. You mentioned one thing. I'll go down a rabbit hole in a hurry. You mentioned Georgia Tech, and of course they're playing Auburn tonight. Of course they're playing Auburn this coming weekend. There's a throw to first. Hit the first base umpire. Going to kick down into the bullpen. And Kohler going to get all the way to third. Yeah, David Bailey. Walk this one off. Yeah. David Bailey, the first base umpire, you take a little, another look at this. May have been good at many things in elementary sports, but dodgeball, not one of them. So now Powell 
in the situation. Runner at third base. Like to put one in play, see if he can get the run home. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth. Well, 1 0 lifted into right field. And ranging over, making the catch. Runner going to tag and will come in to score. And it's a 6 0 Mississippi State lead. Caston came in to make the play. And so here's what put the runner Kohler over at third. We're talking about that pickoff. And here's the pickoff and skipped off the leg and down into the bullpen. Six nothing state lead. Now in your version of dodgeball, could you throw it off the ground? Oh, no. Yeah, I couldn't either. It had to hit him in the ear. And that's probably what David Bailey was saying. That ball's down, and so I really ain't got to worry about it. Try to get those reminiscing moments of fourth grade dodgeball. One and one to count. Ethan Pulliam at the plate, grounded out to the third baseman his first time up. Sacrifice fly for... Joe Powell. Strike two. That ball a little low. But this is not a game that where one would expect a tight zone. And the 2-2 to Ethan Pulliam. Line foul and out of play. We'll do it again. No, I was thinking about Georgia Tech in that 97 season. Keith Dillgard had that big win. That was a loser's bracket game here in Starkville. That allowed State to play Washington. Had to beat Washington twice. Won that regional. State beat Georgia Tech that day. And eliminated Georgia Tech. 10 to 2. And the 2 2. Down and away. Try to throw in the breaking ball on the 3-2 pitch. Missed down and away in a two, uh, one-out walk. One-out walk to Ethan Pulliam, and now the top of the order will come up. Yeah, Dilgar that year was 6-1. and 6.25 earned run average. I didn't remember Brian Weiss pitching that much. 17 inning, I mean, 17 appearances for Brian Weiss. He had that great year of later on in his career at the plate where he hit over 400. 1-0. Knocked down, uh -oh. throw back to first, and then safe. And Pulliam kind of got hung out to dry. And Banks couldn't get the tag down. A little indecision right there. And Banks with a swipe just didn't get it. There's a strike. Back behind the plate, will there be a play? No. 
Fits back in that triple crown area. Right behind the plate. Count two balls, two strikes. Take a look at Imani. Bat goes flying. Count now two and two. And a rocket shot past the shortstop into left field. Pulliam on his way to third. Amani's on his to second base. And boy, that was a ball that was scalded off the bat from Amani Lair. S ball hit very hard by Larry. Pulliam on the move, and now Bulldogs, a couple of guys in scoring position for Mershon. Mershon has walked twice, he scored each time. Walked and scored in the first, walked and scored in the third. Fouls that one back and a count one and one. Bottom of the fourth, a six nothing Mississippi State lead, second and third. And one out. And pass the catcher, and Pulliam will come in to score the seventh Bulldog run. So a wild pitch, and Mississippi State scores its first run of the, the second run of the bottom of the fourth. So you still go back though, Bart, still a situational hitting opportunity here for Mershon. If he can put a ball on the ground of the middle infield, he's going to get a run home. 2-2. Two, two. And down the left field side, slicing out of play. Down on that Paxton berm. All right. Oh, hey now. Well, nice job by Kroll, the catcher. Fly that one down. One out, we're in the bottom of the fourth, a 7 nothing Mississippi State lead. Garcia from the windup. And that is ball four. So a walk to David Mershon, and that's his third walk of the night. That'll get Dakota Jordan to the plate. Jordan singled in the first, drove in a couple. In the third inning, he tripled on a ball. Now Burrell out in center just didn't keep his feet. Otherwise, it might have been out, but it goes in the book as a triple and an RBI. That was a very well hit ball, not to take anything away there. And that was the seventh walk of the night for Alcorn pitching. The starter, the Renz, walked four. That's the third in this inning by Garcia. There's a strike call. They fouled it back. A swing and a miss. And Dakota Jordan strikes out. 
for out number two. Pitching up and up and out of the zone. Jordan chase one off the plate. He's retired now, two down. So runners at the corners. Here's Hunter Hines. Excuse me, Jackson McKenzie. His first at bat. He came in for Hunter Hines last inning in the field. Runner goes from first. And Rashawn now in scoring position. A 7-0 Bulldog lead. Jackson McKenzie at the plate. Freshman from Pace, Florida. Three hits and 18 at bats, batting 188. Excuse me, three hits and 16 at bats. Three zero, way upstairs. That's back to back appearances in the finals. And now a championship. It popped up. Foul territory, and that will get out of play. Bounce on top of the dugout. Almost got to the second level. And everybody being nice tonight. Two and one to count. Man, that one rip foul. Three and two the count. Runners go, three, two pitch, swing and a miss. And so Garcia limits the damage in the bottom. Grounded out to the shortstop his first time up. Hit a ball hard to the left side. Speaking of shortstop, Dylan Cup is now out there at short for State. That pitch missed somewhere. Well, that's good to see. Dylan Cup had a banged up knee a couple of weeks ago, about three weeks ago. He's been out of the lineup, trying to work him back. 1-1. That pitch missed. See Dylan Cup, the freshman, out of shortstop. So you've got Kohler, Cup, Pulliam, and McKenzie around the infield. Yeah, Kohler over third and then three freshmen. Cup and Pulliam in the middle of the infield and then McKenzie over at first. Last time Dylan Cup played back on March the 21st. It's been almost a month. And now three and two the count from Gavin Black.
Five, six, and seven in the inning for Alcorn. Gomez, Caston, then Lucky. 3-2. Swing and a miss. Chase the pitch up. And out number one at the top of the fifth inning. So 94 on the fastball finds the top of the zone. Do you see where John Sterling is hanging it up? I did see that. It's pretty much said I'm done. Long time voice of the New York Yankees. Believed it, well, we'll know more Saturday in the press conference, but some idea of some health concerns. It's kind of the soundtrack to those great 90s Yankees teams. Oh, two. They missed outside. Well, you can't say it too fast because the signals are not coming quickly behind home plate here tonight. Chop, shortstop coming in, cup on the run, flips it over, and he flips it over by the dugout. And a one-out base runner in the top of the fifth. It looked like watching Cup react to this ball at first that he maybe thought it was hit a little better than it was. That's one that was likely to be a do or die play anyway. And they charge him with a throwing error out at shortstop. And so one out base runner in the top of the fifth. Jalen Lucky will now bat. There's a strike called to count one and one. Top of the fifth, seven nothing Mississippi State leading. Bulldogs got three in the first, two in the third, and two more in the fourth. Seven runs on just four hits in the game. Alcorn State has one hit, and they have a another runner reaching on an error. Swing and a miss. Well, lucky. Almost came out of his shoes. By the time he regained his balance, he was back to the dugout. <laughs> hey, almost got Joe Powell in the head with a bat. Well, if social media is to be believed, and why wouldn't it be? Jack Caglione just hit a ball 516 feet. Who's reporting? Uh, Mick Hubert, I'm sure. That, that looks is like courtesy of Florida Gators baseball. A one account. A knockdown. Throw over to first. Air Force and AM played earlier today. Is that game over? That one appears now to have gone final, 15 to 5. Lifted into the outfield, Dakota over to make the catch, ranging to his right, and that will end the inning. So Hawthorne State strands a runner. And Bryce Chance going to lead off. Right, 
Where Bryce singled his first time up. Hit the ball into left field. Hit a sacrifice fly back in the third. Pitch missed outside to count two and one. No chance in a hitter's count, three and one here. Trying to get a board to start the bottom of the fifth. And he will. Man, a leadoff walk. Bryce Chance. Draws the walk. And that's nine walks in the inning, issue, or nine walks tonight, issued by Alcorn State. So six o'clock on Friday, State in Auburn. And then 5 o'clock on Saturday. And then third and final game of the series will be at 1 o'clock on Sunday. Super Bulldog weekend. Football at 1 o'clock on Saturday. A lot of former football players coming back this weekend. Only five combined hits in this game. Hey, did you see this past weekend over in Waco, Texas? You had the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. Had Jackie Sherrill and Mike Leach both going in to the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. Man, a walk to Kohler in first and second, nobody out. So a big Mississippi State night over in Waco on Saturday. That, by the way, the 10th walk of the game for Bulldog hitters. Four hits, but ten walks. And right now, Alcorn pitching is thrown combined 111 pitches, just 46 strikes. Uh, that will lead to walks. Heidi Herzog passed away today. See that? I did not. Longtime manager of the Cardinals. Well, that was the days of Vince Coleman and Willie McGee, Jack Clark, Tommy Herr, George Hendrick. Did you say Ozzie Smith? Of course, Ozzie Smith at short. There's a fly ball hit into left field. And back on the track and reaching up and making the catch as Powell goes deep to left field. And a nice play by Lucky out there. Just kind of drifted back and back and hauled it in. A high towering fly ball by Powell. And Lucky makes the play up against the wall, and that's out number one.
Chance tagged up went to third. Kohler still over at first. Runners at the corners. Here's Pullian. And he pulls a single through the left side and a base hit. And the first career hit for Ethan Pulliam drives in a run. And Mississippi State has an 8-0 lead. That's something you always remember is that first hit. And for Pulliam, not just a hit, but an RBI to go with it. And Amani Larry to the plate. Eight nothing game. Bottom of the fifth. Strike two. Amani Larry, one for two, doubled his last time up. Chops that one left side. Underhand toss, they get one at second, that's all. So they get the middle runner down at second base, pull him a race, Kohler goes over to third. Larry reaches on the fielder's choice. Now two outs in the inning, and Mershon will bat with an 8-0 lead and runners at the corners. Here's Dylan Cup with his first at bat in a while. Batting 238 on the season, 15 hits and 63 at bats. Out of the 15 hits, he has four doubles. So 11 singles, four doubles. He struck out 13 times. And grounds out with just foul. Kohler, the runner at third. Amani Larry's over at first. Well, this weekend you got A and M. Taking on Alabama. Throw is down and into center field. And a run's going to score in the air and throw. Another runner going to go over to third. It's a 9 0 game. He's trying to throw through with two outs. Kroll's already thrown out one base run. A little surprised he throw through there. Yeah, a little bit. Well, Bulldogs running, trying to put some pressure. The Alcorn defense and get the run home. And a hard hit ball into center field. An RBI single for Dylan Cup. And Mississippi State has a 10 0 lead. That's good to see out of Cup. He's been out of play here for a while. Hits that one 103 hard up the middle and picks up the run from third base. So a three run bottom of the fifth inning and a 10.
This game does have a 10-run rule after seven. So Alcorn would have to bat twice more, and State would have to keep that 10-run lead for that to kick in. Into shallow left and going to drop for a base hit. Nolan Stevens, little Texas leaguer. Just flares one the other way, gets it to drop. Pump back line drive. And it keeps the inning alive. Fisted that one out in the outfield. So back-to-back -back singles for the Bulldog freshman, Dylan Cup. Stops at second. Nolan Stevens on over at first. Talk about A&M on the road at Bama. Alabama won two out of three this past weekend against Arkansas. They get A&M at home this weekend. A&M just blasted Vanderbilt this past weekend at home. Vanderbilt hosting Florida. Those are the Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. Two Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. So A&M at Bama and then Florida, who has really been struggling. And then they're on the road at Vandy. Then you got Ole Miss at Georgia. Tennessee is at Kentucky. Pop back and out of play. And that one's going to get back in the seats. Arkansas at South Carolina. Of course, Mississippi State hosting Auburn. And then LSU is at Missouri. LSU at 3-12 and 12 in the lead. In the West, you get Arkansas at 12 and three, A and M at 11 and four, State seven and eight in third place, Alabama a game back of State, they're six and nine, Ole Miss five and ten, LSU three and twelve, and then Auburn in seventh place, last place in the West, at two and thirteen. It's the worst record in the league. LSU is currently losing to New Orleans. That pitch is inside, and that's ball four, and the bases are going to be loaded with two outs. The privateers. Well, it took us a while to beat New Orleans on a Wednesday night down in Biloxi. And now Michael O'Brien will get it at bat. Over on the east side, Kentucky's off to a 14 and one start. And as we said, the Wildcats at home this weekend against Tennessee, that's a big series. Tennessee, second place in the east at 10 and five. Charlie, wouldn't you say you got Kentucky, Tennessee, then Arkansas, A&M, those are the four that kind of separated themselves here early in the season. Well, Kentucky just you knew they would have a good team this year, but that lineup just top to bottom, there's just nowhere that just lets you off the hook. They're 9-0 and oh against the top 25. <laughs> That's... Well, Nick's done a nice job up in Lexington. O'Brien pinch hitting for a high Zach here. 10-0 game in the bottom of the fifth. Base is loaded. And Michael O'Brien still looking for her, his first Bulldog base hit. He's 0 for 5 at the plate. Started in the game on Sunday in Oxford in the DH role. He takes a pitch just down, and now the count 3-1. Well, one thing I think you can say for sure at this time of the season State still, still trying to figure some things out. You saw Spolita get a start in the DH role. You saw O'Brien get a start. Yeah, that's ball four and the bases loaded walk. O'Brien gets credit for the RBI. That's the first of his career. And yeah, coming in to score is Dylan Cup with the 11th run of the night. And we'll have a pinch hitter, Aaron Downs. Will come in. 12th walk of the night for Alcorn pitching.
seven of those have come home to score. And a backdoor breaking ball to Aaron Downs. See, look at those 11 runs on the board for Mississippi State. Seven of those guys reach base with a walk. Amani Larry scored in the fifth, reaching on a fielder's choice. Only three times have Bulldogs who reached base by a hit scored. Walks can change the game. And Chop fielded by the third baseman will step on the bag, and that will end the inning. What a nice shot by bottom of the order. Nine hole hitter, Jalen Burrell to lead off. In the top of the sixth inning against Colby Holcomb. Holcomb pitched in the game on Sunday in Oxford. Kind of got hit around a little bit. Trying to bounce back a couple of days later. This is outside. Which, in fairness, was about normal for the course on Sunday. Yeah, Ole Miss pounded out 16 hits and seven at bats. Two and two, the count. They waved at it, couldn't check it. And a strikeout to lead off top of the sixth inning. Nice pitch. Just couldn't make up the mind. Burrell goes around, strikes out Swinky. And the ninth strikeout tonight for Bulldog pitching. And Paladino will bat. He's 0 for 2. A couple of ground outs. One back to the pitcher, the other to the second baseman. And fouls that pitch off. Paladino came in batting 394. Team's leading hitter, the shortstop for Alcorn State. And a strike two. Well, if you're looking for bright spots for Mississippi State and Charlie. And I am. <laughs> you look back to this weekend. You found your guy. Poked in the right field, and that's a base hit. So Paladino gets his first hit of the night. Second hit overall for Alcorn State. And a one-out single off of Colby Holcomb. Cal Steven has been outstanding in that Friday night role. Boy, hadn't he, though? He has really developed into a legit Friday starter in this league. And so you would expect to see Cal in the game on Friday against Auburn. And Ben Martin at the plate sends that one down the right field side and out of play. And you know, one of the things to look at is Gerangelo Sanja pitched just three innings in the game on Saturday at Ole Miss. Came out of the game. At the end of three, with only thrown 54 pitches. Just did not look comfortable out there. That's something to look for and see how Gerangelo is this coming weekend. And if State kept it to the same schedule they've had, it would be Gerangelo who would pitch in front of that big crowd on Saturday. You anticipate Huge crowds this weekend. The Super Bulldog weekend. And now the count two and two. 
Well, and then, of course, the question remains for State. What are you going to do on Sunday? The injury to Nate Dome has forced the shakeups, and Bulldogs still having to tinker around a little bit with that game. And a strike three, and a strikeout for Colby Holcomb. Big twing. Well, Holcomb just trying to pump fastballs. Hey, Brent bends off the breaking ball there. Runner at first, two outs. And that will end the inning. So call Bulldogs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. It'll be Chester, Powell, and then Pulliam. The first at bat of the night for Nate Chester. 11 runs on the board for the Bulldogs, just seven hits. In getting there, it's been a story of getting walks and coming around to score for the dogs. Yeah, just four hits on the season for Nate Chester. Four hits and 25 at bats, batting 160. That ball got away from the bullpen. Three one, and back in the center field, a solid single for Nate Chester. Had yeah, nothing cheap about that at all. And yeah, leadoff single, Kiki Ford. Gives up the hard hit ball. Eight hits in the game for the Bulldogs. Here's Joe Powell. To the left side. The second for one around the horn. That's a nice double play. No, it certainly is. Ball hit on the ground to third. It's glove side. Taking him right into the throw he needs to make. Now get Pulliam to the plate again. Pulliam here in the ball game. Grounded out the third in the second, walked and scored in the fourth. Single drove in a run in the fifth. Oh, 
And through the left side, and Ethan Pulliam has his second hit tonight. Another hard hit ball by Pulliam. That's 103 off the bat. Second hit of the ball game. Both of them just powered through the six hole. Have another pinch hitter in the ball game. Spolito will come in. Believe a guy with a good hit tool, but just one out of nine here on the season. Walked once, struck out three times. Still few enough at bats, just a couple of hits for Spolita, and the average goes changing in a hurry. Try to go the other way with it, fouled it all. Spolita one hit nine at bats. Two outs, runner at first. Down and in, and back to the screen. Well, if you look to the top of the seventh, Bulldogs could get out of it without giving up multiple runs. Could get out of here with a seven-run, a, a seven-inning, ten-run rule, leading eleven nothing in the bottom of the sixth. Right to the second baseman. Martin steps and throws, and that will end the inning. Well, nice. Forsyth comes into pitch. Strike one. Fifth Bulldog pitcher tonight. Well, Charlie, when you look back, Pico Con tonight, three innings of work, no runs, one hit. I thought Pico was pretty good. Had everything working. Electric fastball, had a changeup, breaking ball working. And when you say pretty good, it was good. 38 pitches thrown by Pico tonight in the start, 31 strikes. So 38 pitches, 31 strikes. Ligon threw an inning, Black threw an inning, Holcomb threw an inning. Can you think of a time that we've seen Pico with that velocity control, just everything we saw at him today? Yeah, look good. Look comfortable out there. I'm not talking at all about opponent, competition, anything. I'm just talking about just kind of the good old stuff great. His stuff looked really good tonight. And that's got to be promising for State, trying to find a way to fill some innings on the weekends. Pico looks like a guy who could give you some right now. And now the count three and two. Through the slider on three and two. Got the swing and a miss. Strikeout for Logan Forsyth. That's the 12th Bulldog strikeout tonight. Gomez will now come to the plate. Over two, grand out and a strikeout. Well, may 
came in just low. And now two and two. Yeah, Charlie and I will be back with you on Friday at 6 o'clock. State and Auburn game one of the three-game series, 2-2. Two -two. Foul back. We'll do it again. Try to go the other way with it. Left it just foul. Gomez got a just a little bit on it, foul it back. Been a warm day today. 82 at game time. That pitch way outside. Now the count full. Lined in the left field, that's a base hit. Well, Gomez kept on uh, trying to go that way. Lined it in the left. Third hit of the night for Alcorn State. And Gavin Caston will now come to the plate. It was really nice at bat that time by Gomez. Fouled off four pitches. Before ultimately getting the single to left field, have a pinch runner over at first base. Ty Bowe is going to run now, the freshman from Atlanta. There's a strike call. And out number two of the seven. So with the 10 run rule in effect, Bulldogs just an out away from being able to close this one down. Start to look forward to the big weekend with Auburn coming to town. And there's a strike and a count one and one. Well, Bulldogs a strike away now from winning this one via the 10 run rule in seven innings. Runner at first, the one two. And that will do it. Mississippi State wins it 11 to nothing over Alcorn State.